Hello world, I'm Nick, software engineer and .NET enthusiast. In this video, I wanna take you through edit forms in Blazor. This is where we create forms so that users can input data, which can then be submitted to our server for further processing. Before we get into the detail, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel for more great .NET content. It's a huge help and it means I can give you more videos around .NET and C Sharp. So let's get into edit forms in ASP.NET Blazor. So submitting forms is a very, very common part of web development, you know, for ASP.NET, React, um, Angular, any framework you use, even if it's vanilla HTML, you're going to be creating a form at some point that requires somebody to input some data. But with that comes things like validation, binding, and all those good things that allow that data to transfer from the front end to the back end. Now in Blazor, there's a very specific component that you can use, it's built in, called the edit form. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you in this video. So I'm going to start off by building a very simple, you know, very basic form. And then once that form has been built, I'll link it to a method on the onSubmit event, which will trigger that code when the user submits the form. I'll then look at things like binding, so being able to say this field binds to a specific object in a class. And then I'll also look at validation, so things like your email isn't correct, or this particular field is required for you to continue. So let's take a look at building a basic form. So I've got my Blazor example project here, and we're on the index.razor page. So this is the first page that we see when we fire up the Blazor application. Underneath the welcome to your new app paragraph, I'm going to add a tag called edit form. So everything inside this edit form will be part of that form. So we can add things like a button, for example. So we can say button. So this uses the usual HTML button tag. We give it the specific type, which is submit. So this is the same as you would see in a regular HTML form. So I'm just going to run the application. So as expected, the page has actually crashed. It's thrown an error and it's saying that there was an invalid operation. So the edit form requires that either a model parameter is added in or an edit context parameter. This is by default because it means that the form requires something to pass the data to. So for our example, we're gonna use a model, um, and, but you could also create what's called an edit context. For this video, I'm gonna to stick to model, uh, but essentially in order to get this form to render, we need to add a model to it. But what is a model? Well, if you've already worked with um, ASP.NET model view controller, you may have some experience with this concept of a model, uh, but basically what we're creating with a model is a reference to a class or an object. So we're saying this form has a model which is X, and X could be a person, it could be a vehicle, you know, it could be something that the data we're passing in from the form needs to sit within, it needs to reside within some kind of object. So for example, if we had a new registration, for example, that could be a model, and the form where somebody puts in their name, they put in their email address, that could then be funneled through to a registration model. So to add a model to an edit form, we simply use a model attribute. So within the edit form tag, we'll say model equals, and then we can point it to a class that we've already created. The problem is that we don't have a registration class. So let's go ahead and create one. So inside this data directory, I'm going to say create a new class. We'll call it registration. And then in here, we can put some properties to which we can bind the form to. A registration would have a public string called uh, first name. So you can get or set that. It would also have a public string called last name. Get set. And then we could also do public string email address. Get set. So those are the basic things that we want to capture from the form for our registration. And then we can use this registration model uh, on the submit action, which I'll demonstrate later on, to transform that data in some way, to maybe submit it to a database or something like that. So now that we have our model, we need a reference, or an instance actually, of a registration object. So in Blazor, we can say 
code, so at code, and that creates a code block. And then we can add an instance of that registration in the same way that we would in a regular class. So registration, registration equals new. Okay, so we just make a new instance of it. And then I just need to add a reference to, to the registration class. So this now means that we can point to this model. So we can say registration. So this form is now bound to that registration class as its model. Now we can start adding some input boxes and then we can bind those boxes to properties within that model. Now in normal HTML or vanilla HTML, you usually add an input tag. For Blazor in the edit form component, you add what's called an input text. I'm gonna give this input text an ID and you'll see why shortly. So if we give this an ID, and this is closer to the regular sort of ASP.NET stuff that you might be used to. So if we say that this input text has an ID of first name, okay? What we can then do is say we want to label that text box. So above I'll put a label tag and then I'll say for equals and then first name. So then if we close that off and then we put some text inside this, that will be labeling that text box. So instead of trying to put the first name or the label inside here, actually we can say create a label for this referencing its ID. Very similar to most conventional HTML forms. We're still not finished though, because even though we've built this form, there's really nowhere for the data to go. So we still need to bind it. Even though we've got a model, the data being submitted in the form uh, doesn't know which properties in the model to send the text to. So let's go ahead and put a new attribute in here. And that attribute is here, bind value. So I'll put that in. And with bind value, what you can do is say, on my model, I want this text box to be associated with this property on the model. So for example, we can say registration, because that's our model instance, dot, and then it would be, in fact, I think I just need to put a, there we go, an at symbol in front, dot first name. Okay, so now that input text is bound to the registration model's first name property, which means that once it's submitted, it should then have that as part of the model. So let's not forget that we've got some other properties on this registration model as well. So we've got the last name and we've got the email address. So the last name is quite easy to, to figure out. We essentially just do the same thing that we did here, but for a input text of ID last name, and then we bind it to the last name. So let's go ahead and do that then. So I'll create another input text first. The ID for this one, really annoying autocorrect on this. It keeps changing ID for some reason. Uh, and then we'll say the ID is last name. We're gonna bind it to the registration models last name property and then that closes that off. And then we need a label for it as well. So we'll say label for is last name. And then the text will be last name. There we go. And then our last field is email address. Now this is, this is a little bit different. So we're still inputting text, but this time we want to have some implicit validation on the text box. And by that, I mean to take advantage of the native validation that is present in HTML5. So if this is, if this is an email text box, we want it to automatically verify that somebody's inputted an email address, or at least one that is conforming to the standard of an email address, which would be something at something dot something. Okay, that's the basic rule. So to do that, we can give the input text tag an attribute of type. And then we can say the type is email. And if we do that, it will automatically check to make sure that what has been entered is an email. And if the person tries to submit it, it will say, sorry, can't do this. It needs to be a valid email address. There are several other types as well that you can use. So if you set this to password, then it will automatically mask the characters that are entered in. So if you were creating a login form, you would want to create a input text of type password for the password field. So I'll go ahead and change this back to email and I'll give it a label as well. So um, I need to also give it a, an ID. So the ID for this one will be email address. 
and then the label is for email address. And then email. There we go. And then we also need to bind that to the email property on the registration model. So bind value at registration dot email address. Okay, so there is one mistake that I've made here which could cause the application to crash, which is that I haven't put an at symbol before these bind value parameters because this is a Blazor specific thing. So I need the at symbol to be there for it to run. Uh, and then let's go ahead and debug this, get the app going, and we should see a rendered form. So there we go. So here we've got our first name, we've got our last name and our email. And you should be able to see that if I try and put an email or uh, an invalid email in here, that button's looking a little bit weird, so I'll take a look at that in a sec. But uh, yeah, you can see straight away, it's validating. It's saying that it, you must include an at symbol in the email address. You see there as well, it's also validated to say, well, you've added an at symbol, but it's incomplete. So then if I was to finish that off, there you go, it's, it's even validating that it shouldn't be having specific symbols in the email address. So the validation on this is pretty good. And simply by saying that the input text type is email, that validation has kicked straight in. So let's take a look at that button. I think it's simply because I haven't put anything in the body. So I'll just put submit. There we go. And then I'm just going to break these up a little bit because I don't want them to be wrapping along. So let's just do some break line breaks in there just to bring each one onto a new line. There we go. Because we're not gonna do loads of CSS stuff in this. So let's just make it so that we can easily format the form. There we go. And they're very close together. Obviously it doesn't look great, but you get the idea essentially is that if you want a quick form, you can use the edit form component to, to put that together. Now at the moment, this is not gonna do anything. Uh, so it's kind of pointless. We need the form to be able to take some action when we click submit. So let's create a void method and we're just going to call it handle form submission. So it's public void handle form submission. So we have our handle form submission method and we now need to get it to link to that form. So what we can do is add on submit to the edit form at the top and then we can reference that handle form submission. Now also we want to get access to the model that comes through. So with that, we can inject the edit context and just call it context. And that will allow us to say context.model and therefore we should be able to get all the different properties. So now what should happen is when we click submit, it should route the request through to this method. I'll put a breakpoint in there and we'll debug and we'll watch that happen. So I'll just put some random data in here, click submit. And as we can see, it's now hit this method. And if we look at the context, we can see the model. So we could get the email address. If I go to uh, context.model, we can see that there. We can also say dot email address. And that will actually throw us an error. So what you'd have to actually do in this scenario is cast that back to a registration because then it would be of the appropriate type and you'd be able to access its members. So an example of this, if you can, I don't know if you can see in the immediate window, it might be too small, but if I say registration in brackets and then we're casting the context.model, I'll wrap that in parentheses as well or brackets. So that should now be a registration object. And then we can say dot email address. And there you go, it's got the email address that was passed through. And then from that point, we can do pretty much whatever we want. We could do a HTTP request to uh, another server. We could use Entity Framework to put the model into a database. It's pretty much up to you what you do next. However, it's not quite everything we wanted. And so the last thing I'm going to show you is how to add even more validation to the form so that you can say that specific fields are actually required. So the form itself won't know that. It can only validate types, for example. So like I showed you with the email address, you can specify that a input text form 
field is an email field and, so, and therefore it will automatically look for things that make a valid email address but the form doesn't know that you require an email for example so with this we can use data annotations uh, on the model itself and that will allow us to then enforce policies that say specific fields are required so to do this let's head over to the registration class and let's say the uh, email address is required you know just for sake of argument as an example. So to do this, we can put an attribute above the email address property, and we can simply say required. And as you can see, this is part of system.componentmodel.dataAnnotations. So to use this, you'd have to reference that namespace. So now we've added that in, the form should enforce the requirement of that email address property. Put some data in first name, some data in last name, we'll leave the email blank and nothing's happening. So there's more that we need to do for this. We've added the attribute to the model, so why isn't this working? Well, actually, it's because the form, even though it has a link or a binding through to the model, it doesn't automatically pull through the attributes that you put in. So to do this, what we need to do is add two new tags to the form. So I'll just stop the application, and at the top of the form, I'm going to put in a tag called data annotations validator. So this essentially turns on that data annotation aspect that we added to the model. I'm also going to add one called validation summary. So with these two together, this should then allow the form to enforce any of the annotations that we've put on the model. There is another thing that we need to change, and it's really important to note that you have different submission types. So here, this on submit is actually just saying whenever you submit something. So the validation doesn't actually kick in on on submit. What we instead need is on valid submit. So this instead will say if the submission is valid, then it will go through to that handle form submission method. So first name has some data, last name has some data, email is blank, and there we go. It outlines the specific fields that have a problem, and it does this automatically for you. So you don't have to worry about handling things yourself. You can do that. You can use on invalid submit to route through to another method, which you can use to handle uh, that invalid submission. In most cases, it's fine for it to just say this field's invalid and to do it automatically. So there are also other attributes that we can put onto our model to enforce specific required behavior uh, or to enforce policies. So for example, we could also say that for the first name, uh, it has to have a maximum string, string length. So we could say, don't put any more than two characters in this field, which is crazy for a first name, but this is just an example. Uh, so we can say that the max length is two, and then we can also say that the error message is first name is too long. And that means then that if we put anything that's longer than two characters in that first uh, text box, it will show us another message to say, nah, you can't do that. So if we go up here and I try to type this in, as soon as I leave the first name text box, as soon, you know, if I move the focus away from it, then it will validate it. And straight away, first name is too long. So I can't submit this until I've repaired that or I've satisfied that condition. So I actually find edit form really useful. I think it's a nice way to build forms quickly. Um, and um, it's fairly easy to do. It's quite a simple aspect of ASP.NET. Uh, so I really hope you found this useful. Uh, please let me know if you've tried to use the forms and you can't get it working. I'm happy to help. And please do join me next time for some great .NET content. Thank you.